This is called bagasse. It's what's left over from processing sugarcane. About a third of the plant becomes waste as it's refined into sugar. During the harvesting season, India produces enough of this sweet-smelling pulp to make these giant dunes, around 100 million metric tons every year. Now, one company is transforming it into plates, bowls, and trays that are designed to break down in a backyard compost heap. Plastic stays forever, so it's not going to go anywhere. In our case, if you throw it, then it'll, it'll disintegrate in three months max. But does this kind of plant-based alternative make a difference if it still ends up in a landfill? We went to Uttar Pradesh, India, to see how Chuck is making biodegradable tableware from worldwide waste. Polystyrene was discovered in 1839. And is 10 to 20 times lighter than the fluffiest meringue. It wasn't used for plates and packaging until more than a century later, as fast food chains went global. But recycling has never caught up. That's apparent across India, where an amount of plastic equivalent to the weight of the Taj Mahal ends up in streets and waterways every two weeks. Landfills across the country are filling up without government oversight, creating unsafe conditions that can lead to fires. The idea behind Chuck is to replace some of that plastic with biodegradable sugarcane waste. India is the world's second largest producer of sugar, making more than 25 million metric tons in 2020. And that means mountains of bagasse. KM Sugar Mill alone produces over 3,500 tons of it per day during the harvesting season. It can be tough to work with, most of this material will be burned to produce electricity. It's a low pollution alternative to fossil fuel. But it has other uses too. We were told this is a very good fiber for molding. For over 40 years, Ved Krishna's family turned sugarcane waste into paper in a factory owned by his parents. They named it Yashpaka, and their company slogan is Packaging with a Soul. But the business ran into financial troubles and had to deal with faulty equipment. We didn't know whether the company would run the next day or not. What I realized was that all the work that I wanted to do was towards the ecology and environment. Ved went back to the drawing board. He spent years experimenting with new ways to use bagasse. Eventually, we realized that, you know, we have sugarcane pulp, and that can be molded into different products, which can actually be used as placement for these styrofoam products. And by 2017, the company was producing tableware products under a new brand, Chuck. Chuck was really good because, of course, it was about disposable. You can chuck it. It was also good with chuck, which is uh, taste in Hindi. Ved set up shop near sugar plantations and mills to keep costs and the carbon footprint low. Around 100 truckloads of bagasse arrive at the chuck factory every day during peak harvest season. It can take two hours to unload each truck. If the material dries out, the fiber loses strength, so we have to keep it in wet piles. Workers then remove a layer of the tiniest fibers before washing and pressure cooking it. Same concept as you cook dal in your home, the same way you cook bagasse. You use a certain alkaline product to be able to remove the stickies. You know, if you think of a sugary product, it's a little sticky. The alkaline solution helps make it moldable. Workers wash the sludge again to remove any residual chemicals. Then, they distribute it into different machines and molds that press it into shape, squeezing out all the water. Other companies bleach their products, but Chuck decided against it. We were told in the market, Indians don't like to eat in brown, it has to be white. But I said, no, if we are true to our basic idea that we want to be more ecologically sustainable, then we have to stay with lesser and lesser chemicals. Chuck also sources a starch-based compostable packaging for its products instead of virgin plastic. We, of course, realize that our whole 
ecosystem, DNA, world revolves around the idea of leaving the earth cleaner. So if that is the case and we package in plastic, then we've defeated the purpose. Workers like Shilwadi check the finished products for quality before counting and packaging. It's high breathing, high low breathing, high cracking, high moisture, high fiber missing, high. So it's light to come the high data. The Chuck factory can crank out one million individual items in a day. And that's only half of what VED says is possible with the current setup. We are still figuring out a lot of the technology. By the time they reach consumers, Chuck products end up being about 20% more expensive than items made from plastic. Chuck's meal tray costs 10 rupees, or 13 cents, while a plastic tray costs around 8 rupees, or 10 cents. Another reason Chuck costs more? Ved insists on paying his staff a living wage. I think we are very proud of um, having lots of local people. More than that, we are proud of having 50% women and they're amazing. Some women like Shilwadi can make up to 10,000 rupees a month or $131. That's nearly double the minimum wage in the state of Uttar Pradesh. So far, Chuck hasn't turned a profit, but the business continues to grow. Over 3,000 restaurants across India have used the company's tableware. The pandemic was a major setback. Sales dropped by 70%. If restaurants shut down, we shut down. So that's a challenge, but we are trying to now change our model. We are also trying to go direct to customers. So VED plans to set up an online store and make their products available in retail locations. And he hopes to ramp up his business enough to support India's war on plastic. Starting in July, the country will ban many plastic items including the kind of single-use food containers that Chuck wants to replace. So are products made from bagas better for the environment? Probably. Chuck recommends leaving its products for 90 to 180 days in a backyard composting bin that maintains moisture and good oxygen flow. But they can still harm the environment if they end up in a landfill where they won't decompose as fast. Plastic, on the other hand, never really goes away. It just keeps breaking down into smaller and smaller particles. VED is just one of many entrepreneurs around the world recycling waste into food containers and utensils. LifePack in Colombia makes compostable plates out of pineapple crowns. Hemos usado residuos que antiguamente los estaban botando y eso lo estamos transformando. Entonces, esa es la ventaja, esa es la diferencia que nosotros estamos haciendo. In Mexico, Biofase creates bioplastic cutlery out of avocado waste. And in Denmark, a young innovator is making edible cutlery and bags out of potatoes. And it will likely take all these companies and more to manage plastic waste now and into the future. So I believe each of us can make a difference. It's only a 70-year-old challenge. Typically, the plastics that we use, the cheapest varieties last about 500 years. So you can imagine that first bugger still has 430 years to go. 